Hola, Vivers. Mi nombre es Sandra y soy vuestra profesora de inglés. Hoy vamos a resolver el examen de la PCE de inglés de mayo de 2022. Para ello nos vamos a nuestra página web, que será luis-mediovives.es. Podemos ir desde el blog o desde recursos, ¿vale? En recursos buscaríamos exámenes resueltos, PCE, junio de 2022, y pinchamos en inglés. Vale. Eh, comentaros algunas cosas sobre el examen. Eh, es un examen bastante asequible, como vamos a ver ahora en un momento. La única diferencia con exámenes anteriores ha sido la longitud del texto, que es considerablemente más largo que otros. Como podéis ver, son casi dos hojas para dos preguntas que tenemos que responder. Así que eh, vamos a, no voy a leerlo. ¿vale? Eh, tenéis el texto en la página web. Y tenéis además subido un archivo donde las palabras que tienen un nivel un poquito más eh, avanzado eh, he añadido una definición para ellas, ¿vale? O bien en algunos casos la traducción al español, ¿vale? Eh, sin embargo, aunque tiene como veis bastante vocabulario avanzado, eh, se puede sacar por contexto de manera bastante sencilla. Eh, tenemos unas cuantas, algunas no son realmente avanzadas, sino que deberíamos conocerlas, pero eh, pues si no la conocemos nos puede generar algo de dificultad, por ejemplo este o que significa deber eh, también tenemos alguna expresión completa, que es incluso difícil encontrar en algunos diccionarios, como pudiera ser esta, in another first pues quizá de manera muy común hemos visto las tres palabras separadas pero esta expresión tiene una, un significado eh, concreto que es en otro plano, o sea, directamente la hemos puesto en español. ¿vale? Podéis echar un vistazo, eh, a meet, que es otra palabra que se utiliza muchísimo en inglés en contextos formales, que significa in the middle of o en Vale, pues eh, me gustaría que leyerais el, el texto tranquilamente y que si queréis incluso para que eh, ganar vocabulario en inglés, que nunca está de más, el inglés viene bien para todo, podéis echar un vistazo. Eh, y trabajar con él. Vamos a las respuestas, que es lo que nos interesa de verdad aquí. En la primera, nos dicen, according to the text, the right one would be C. Princess Mako's love story can be likened to that of Prince Harry. Voy a utilizar inglés y español, ¿vale? A lo largo del examen. Eh, this is the right answer and we can see that at the beginning of the text when they mention Meghan Mako. I think it's on the third paragraph. The first sentence, the couple's dramatic exit from royal life has riveted the media in Japan and elsewhere, drawing comparisons to Britain's Prince Harry and his wife Meghan Markle. So drawing comparisons, they can be likened. And then let's go to the second one. Why is Japan's monarchy in jeopardy? Well, this word is also a bit advanced, but we can guess, we should know it. Uh, a synonym for jeopardy could be danger or hazard. So why is Japan's monarchy in danger? Well, because there are very few claimants to the throne. Even though we may not know the meaning of these words, we can guess that it means that there are very few people that can opt for the throne, right? So uh, the claimants are, as you can see in here, someone who, has, who, a who asks to be given something which they think they are entitled to. And then the third one, how did Mako and Komuro meet? Well, we can see that, uh, I think is um, the second part, I think it's here, yes. Uh, 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 uh. This is not the first time that Princess has gone her own way. Rather than study at Tokyo's prestigious Kagushuin University, favored by the imperial family and other Japanese elite, she chose the International Christian University in Tokyo. And this is not the evidence, okay? This is just the context. It was there that she met Komuro in 2012 at an event for students interested in studying abroad. So, at a student mobility event. Because she wasn't in Scotland, nor in England. And then let's go to the use of English part of the exam. Uh, again, given that uh, this is still COVID uh, model, we can choose eight out of 11 Questions. And let me say that in the previous one, the reading comprehension questions, we uh, 
must choose two out of three. In case we fail to do that, they will only take into account the first two answers for the first part of the test and the first eight answers for the use of English part of the test. Um, in my opinion, this is a very, um, it's not very difficult, uh, these, these, these grammar and vocabulary questions. As we can see, the first one would be swimming because as we all know, um, whenever we need a verb as the subject, we prefer an ing infinitive, a gerund. So swimming is a great sport. And then a very basic vocabulary um, question, the synonym for currently is nowadays. Uh, this is like B1, let's say B1 level question. And then everything was ready when I arrived. Well, anything doesn't make much sense and everything is not a thing. I mean, this doesn't exist. Then number seven, my personal life is nobody's business. We need the apostrophe S because we need to imply ownership. This is uh, the Saxon genitive, okay? So nobody's business. Uh, mi vida personal no es asunto de nadie, right? That would be the translation into Spanish. And then any, and number eight, the right answer would be A, any. Any doctor would say she didn't know what she was doing. Why any and not some of few? Because some and few need a plural noun afterwards. And then nine, I took off my shoes before I entered the room. Very basic, um, a very basic verb. It has to do with uh, clothes. I loved my grandfather. He was an amiable, amusing man. It means uh, we need amusing rather than amused because amused means like interested or that we um, are enjoying uh, something amusing, right? But he was amusing. He was the one that mm, made us amused. And amuse is the verb we need in here an adjective right and then number 11 this is reported speech we have to choose the the right reported sentence but this is very very basic because uh the 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 direct sentence is i can swim really fast he said but we need to distinguish just the the the, the key features of these reporting verbs said that he could really he could swim really fast because told has to be followed by an object he told me or he told you and he's not there and he said me is wrong because when say is followed by an object it has to be followed before by the preposition to he said to me he said to you and this is not very good this is wrong and with the object afterwards even with the preposition is not very common so the right answer a and then number 12 of all his children, she was the one most like him. Well, because like is the word that we use to show similarity uh, or, or that, that someone is similar to someone else, for example. As is used uh, to show similarity, but when we show um, comparison of uh, a feature of an adjective at the same degree, uh, she is as tall as me, for example, but it's like him. And then is just used after more in, in comparisons at a higher degree or after less in comparisons at a, at a lesser degree. And then I blame, I blame myself. I, we need this kind of pronoun in here rather than I, which is a personal pronoun, a subject pronoun that cannot be used after a verb in a positive sentence. And in here, the one that makes more sense is this reflexive pronoun, we need it. Me culpo a mi misma, right? And then number 14, a very easy uh, conditional sentence. The only right question is A, because the whole situation has to do with something likely to happen. Um, it's not a hypothetical situation of the present, the future, or the past. It's something likely to happen. If you have any question, uh, I will do my best to answer them. Right? This is, um, this can actually happen, and that uh, is four out of ten um, uh, points in the exam. But the second part of the exam is the most important one: is the essay, and uh, as in any, as in previous exams, the topic 
the topics are quite um, uh, enjoyable, I would say. I mean, the topic I, 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 I can say that I even enjoy writing these essays. Do you think that sh selfishness is something uh, is sometimes a good thing? Explain your view and give examples from your own experience. And it is always better to tell the truth than to lie. Explain your view. Use a specific reasons and details to support your choice. Um, uh, I have to say that, and this is very subjective, I, I prefer the first one. I think it's simpler. I think Uh, you don't to you don't need to make um, such a profound reflection. I mean, the second one has to do with ethics, right? Um, while the first one, um, while it also has to do with ethics, you can apply it to your own life, uh, I think, more easily. But well, as I said, this is very very subjective. Um, egoísmo, que si crees que a veces es una cosa buena o si es mejor decir la, la verdad que contar una mentira. You can focus on whatever you want. You can, you can, for example, on the second one, I have talked about Kant, Emmanuel Kant, right? The, the philosopher, because this has to do with philosophy. And I mentioned the categorical imperative, but you don't need to know, uh, of course, you don't need to know philosophy to, 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 write your essay you just have to to think about your own life your own decisions what what can be applied to you and this and then uh, you need to use a proper a structure this is essential uh, please do not fail in uh, writing an introduction and then two more paragraphs where you explain further your views and then a conclusion where you um, summarize the previous ideas, right? Um, well, that's it. I'm going back to Spanish. Um, espero que os haya gustado y sobre todo espero que os haya salido súper bien el examen. Si tenéis alguna duda o, o necesitáis algo más, no dudéis en poneros en contacto con nosotros. Un saludo.